What is it? Nothing to lose, everything to gain. Cha cha ho. Switch it up a little bit. A. Toast. Two. Two. Life, <laughs> baby. Life, yeah. Hey, why are you dancing? Hey, hey. Why am I dancing? Yeah, why are you dancing? I just did 29 vueltas around the sun, bro. Okay. <laughs> Jesus Christ. This is. 29th birthday. 29th episode. Basically. Special? S- special edition birthday episode. Birthday weekend episode. Because we're filming this a day after the birthday. And we are in the Marriott in downtown San Diego. One one of our favorite cities. Dude, we love San Diego and we love the Marriott. And <laughs> we love the Marriott. So right. check in with us. You already know. Pero we're ready. We have some questions. There's a lot of topics. I feel like every time we go through a week, como... Pasamos por muchas cosas. We go through a lot of stuff, and it's like this is our therapy. So, like, if you guys needed a reason to not date a podcaster, es porque hablamos bien mucho. We talk a lot. No, I'm the quiet one. <laughs> I'm the quiet podcaster like type. Ten reasons why not to date a podcaster. What would you, what would you they say? Never have time. Mm. They never have time. They always talk about stories on their podcast without throwing names. But you know, it's about you, and it hurts you. If the shoe fit, sorry. size thirteen. <gasps> sorry, not sorry. Big feet, it, big we, hearts. We love to talk. We got it all. We got it all. Pero <laughs> aquí andamos. Ya empezamos con unas ya, mamadas. Ya empezamos con unas mamadas. Pero gracias a todos ustedes. Thank you everybody that follows us, supports us. TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, Apple, Spotify, Facebook. Si alguien te lo mandó, pues muchas gracias por estar aquí. Thank you to everyone that listens. Yes, but. You said you had some questions lined up. I had some questions, but then, and I quote, I don't want this to be all about me. It's about both of us. It's okay. It's not my birthday. People forget about my birthday. <laughs> the, to be continued on that part to of be it. Continued. We'll see. We'll see if y'all forget January. But I'm on us. The happiest and the saddest memory of 28. Ooh. Let's start off with that. Let's start off light. Oh, happiest and saddest. Okay, so I want to end it on a, on a happy note. So okay. saddest, I would say, is realizing and seeing that my, my babies are getting older. You know, obviously, when you spent a lot of time working on a dream or your business, perfecting something, you, you miss out on a lot of time. That's the con to having a business is you're either... If you're going to be present, you won't have enough time to work on your business. And if you're working on your business, you don't have en- enough time to be present. That's like, uh, that's a double-edged sword on that one. If you're a parent, you understand that. Obviously, seeing your kids getting older, getting bigger, like every day, every week counts. And you look back and they start, whether they say something, do something, you're just like, damn, what, what just happened? You know what I mean? The happiest is getting our podcast, getting our show, creating our business, getting into a position where we're winning, traveling, getting recognized. You know, I, the hard work is paying off. And I think that has been the, the biggest and most happiest blessing of this year. My 20, when I was uh, 28, is seeing firsthand and experiencing everything for the first time. Business, traveling, working with big brands, even just getting recognized, whether it's something small by, like, everybody. I'm like, oh, man, it's working. So I think that's the happiest and saddest. It's a double-edged sword, well, however you look at it. If you're not in this type of space or in a business yourself, like, you won't understand because, oh, well, you should be home. You'll have more time to be home. You should. That's what you need to do. But... As time passes, you're like, when I get older, what What am I going to leave them? I have nothing. You know, like oh, my kids are going to have a birthday. I don't want to ask for a day off. I could just take it if I wanted to. But again, it's just I want to live a life that I know we all deserve. And I know I I know what I need to do is just, it's going to take me a little bit of time. And right now I think we're at, a, we're at the best because we are one week prior to going to Atlanta. So when they see this, we're literally a couple of days from going into Atlanta. So yeah, happy and saddest. That's and a, saddest. Yeah, that was 
that was that. But since we touched that parent part of it, what about it? There was a there was a quote that I heard this week, and for all my parents out there that um, are struggling in some way, shape, or form, whether it's not having enough time for your kids, feeling like you're not the best version of yourself for them, or not being the best parent, it you got to remember this: to the world, you are a parent. But to your kids, you are the world. You know, they don't care about a lot of things. All they care about is if you're present. So if you're struggling, just know those little kids see you as their superhero. And if you're a parent that is in that mix of struggling, just know your kids are your lifesavers. And if you can't do it for yourself yet, or have that energy or that self-love in order to do it, do it for them. So just wanted to throw that out from all my parents out there. It's on that quote, touching on that Inga quote. All right. You mentioned to your kids, you are their world. Yeah. How, how does it feel uh, to be away from them when you yourself just said it? You are their world. Mm. Their world is gone a lot of the time. So just think about it from that perspective. Ooh. It hurts, man. I'm not going to sit here next to you and, and say, oh, it's easy. No, it's all right. We'll be back. Nah, man, it hurts, you know. But wish I could be there more. And I know it's a choice. It's not on force. It's a choice. But if I don't do this right now, then I won't be able to give them the life that I know I want them to have. And I know they de- they deserve. Whether, you know, God blesses me with 100 years or half of it. I just want to know I did something for them and I left it for them. Being away is, is not easy. Being away, it, it sucks. Whether you're working a regular 9 to 5 or a 2 to 11 or just working on yourself, like your business. It's a double-edged sword. You want time? You got to earn it. I want free time. I got to work my ass off now in order to get it. But double-edged sword. You want to be present in them, you're going to lose out on money and opportunities. Of course. If you take on opportunities, you're going to lose out on time. So. It's all about balance. It's all about some sort of balance. Teeter-totter. Yeah. One day you're good on this side, but the other side is lower. The other side you're up on one and then lower on the other. But I think just dealing with it as you go. It, you know what your goal is. You know what the final product is going to look like. And I know what I need to do in order to get it. You may not like it. I may not like it. But it's going to pay off. And if it wasn't going to pay off, then I shouldn't be doing it in the first place. So I think that's why I sit on that with being away. Okay. So do you think it's worth it right now? 100%. Yeah. Hundred um, percent. I I'm able to have a lot of time with my babies, but when Daddy needs to go to work, I need to go to work. And I hope one day you understand. I hope one day you see it, and you get to enjoy life the way you need to and want to. But um, you know, for the times I am gone, I'm sorry. But you know, just know Daddy was working. That's about it. Damn. Damn. Five minutes in, we are five minutes emotional. in, bro. Boy, five minutes going in, what's going on? on, man? I think I think people get more sentimental as they age, right? Not you in know, my man. case. I just you know it's been about twelve, about a couple out twelve hours after into twenty nine, and it's been crazy. Nah, <laughs> super emotional. Can't relate. <laughs> they I think say that is the opposite. They say once you for every year you get older, the more tired you get. So, ya estamos valiendo. Ya valió. Como la la cosa ya estamos ya más para allá que para acá. You see, don't even tell me about it because I'm like, what, five years older at this point? Oh, man. All right, shoot it. Shoot it. You uh, mentioned you got a couple things lined up with the podcast coming up. Uh What is your personal goal or what do you want to accomplish this year coming up? Well, I think for anybody that's in business to be able to say, oh, I don't want want money or I don't want – to have those big checks, you know, we'd be lying. Anybody that gets into business knows that's the angle. You want to have enough money to live comfortably and to live a good life. You know, be better for yourself and help out your family, your ones that were there. 
my personal goal is I want to take a dream that I didn't even think was possible and make it possible. I didn't know three years ago we would be able to, we would be able to do what we're doing now at this extent, at this rate, at this pace, but we're doing it and we're in the mix of it. Very grateful for it. Very fortunate to have opportunities like this, but you know, it, all the hard work doesn't go unnoticed. And I think that's what it is. We've been working our asses off for the past three years. Now we're, we're able to, to enjoy a little bit, you know, bits and pieces of it. Cause we still need to do our work. So in the whole year, next year, 2025, I just want to, I at least want to be 1% better in all aspects, business, personal, mental, physical. I just want to be 1% better. Let's take my small wins and, Get them to the big wins and, you know, building our relationships with people, like-minded people, the right people. You know, I think both of us can can say we're not, we're not willing to give up our energy for people that don't know how to value it. Of course. I'm not ready to give up what I have and what I've been able to build now, energy-wise, time-wise, into someone that isn't, doesn't even know the value of it anymore. We've poured into people that never poured in back to us. And that's in a in a lifetime type of ordeal. Now, my time is very valuable. If you're able to call me right now and I answer, you're on, you're in my circle. But if I don't answer you and I don't call you back, it's because you've been out of my circle. And I feel like you don't deserve my time anymore. Because how, how cool is it that the older we get and we're still giving all this time to people and love and acknowledgement of people, and at the end of the day, when they turn around and you need them, no one's there. Oh, they're never there. Where they act like you don't exist. Oh, I'm sorry. I was been busy. Yeah. Well, fuck. I needed you. What happened? It's like the people that you gave everything to. Yeah. Right. The ones you, I guess, changed your schedule, moved shit around. Yeah. To be there for them. Or just act like you don't exist anymore. Yeah. The, deal with that. the people that you've been, that you were willing to change your whole life for and drop everything for. They called you right now and they needed you. You were there. Yeah. And then you needed them, and they didn't even answer, and they didn't even pick up or bother to check. And I get it; everybody's busy. But when you love somebody in a relationship, friendship type of ordeal, and those are your people, no matter what is going on in the world, you stop it, you drop it, and you go and get them. Unfortunately, not everybody's like that. But you know, uh, I love us. You you start learning. As you go, as you get older, and I think we give everybody the benefit of the doubt of I'm still going to be there for people, but up to a certain extent. I'm not going to give you everything because I know you're not going to reciprocate that, but I'm going to give you a little bit. You know what I mean? Like, you know who are, I think we said it, um, I think we said it one time about the, if you look at it as like a branch, a tree. You have people that are branches, you have people that are leaves, and you have people that are literally like your roots. Yeah. People that are leaves are the first sign of a little wind, a little bit of, a little bit of discomfort. They fall off. Boom, they fall off. Yeah. Then you have people that are branches where you can, you know, slowly start leaning on them a little bit, see how they go, see how they, you know, react to a struggle. And you're like, all right, I could trust them a little bit. Until you get there. Then they break. Then they break. And then the people that are like the roots. No matter how hard shit gets or how bad it got, they stood by you and they stood there and they said, I got you. And they helped you and they picked you back up when you were down. Those type of people are the ones that are for life. Yeah. But it's life. Things go up, things go down, and things don't always plan out the way you once imagined. But thank God, you have at least an opportunity to do better and be better. So... Ahí vamos. Ahí vamos. Ahí vamos, poco a poco. So, damn. That's crazy, though. <laughs> the tree analogy. Yeah. Yeah? A little bit of, um, it's just life experiences, right? We we can never talk about things that we never went through ourselves. Like, unfortunately, and fortunately, we go through life and we learn from it. We just have an ability to use our platform and speak about it. You know, there's a there's a lot of people that listen to us and listen to this podcast that are going through similar things, if not worse things, and yet they feel like they don't have a voice, but we're here to, yo, you have one. 
and you 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 need to be heard. Use it, you know. And up until then, if they can or don't feel that reassurance, we're here to give you that reassurance. But again, we're also here to to help you out. So if we can, you can. It's one of those type of ordeals. We're not. We don't come from a a famous background. We don't come from a social media background. We just became a couple 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 people on a on a podcast that put on cameras, microphones, and we just said, "Let's use social media." We said, "Let's talk." I don't even like to talk. Damn, <laughs> and I'm over here talking. Talking about uh, the storm. Yeah. You got I, something to uh, ask or do you want me to? No, no. Dale. All right. You uh, mentioned people fall off, right? Facts. Like parts of a tree. Uh-huh. What do you think is harder? A friend falling off mm-hmm. or like an, or a relationship falling off? They go hand in hand. Okay, how so? Uh. You build a relationship, you know, based off, you know, knowing each other. Friendship. Okay. Friends to a relationship, vice versa. It still hurts the same. And I I believe sometimes friendships hurts the worst because those are your your best friends. The ones that you tell everything to. Yeah. The ones that when you have a problem in your relationship, you're able to tell them about and, you know, hope they guide you. Hope they help you. Hope they're there with you. And when they fall off... For whatever reason, you're just like, damn, I never imagined you leaving me. Or I never imagined you hurting me or disappointing me. Once you're disappointed by somebody, you're just like, I thought you were different. Or I thought this would never happen. And then you hear them say, I'm sorry. But the I'm sorry came a little too late. And they feel they're entitled to coming back into your life, thinking that it's going to be all fine and gravy. It's going to be all good. Reality is it. So, I don't know. I I feel like I can't. I feel like if I hurt you, there's no way I can come back into your life and be like, oh yeah, we're back to how we were, knowing how bad I just hurt you. I feel like, oh yeah, you'll. We're been good. We have years. I'm I'm the same. Yeah. If I know I fucked up, I'm not even gonna bother. Yeah. Like I'll apologize, but I know that that door I close that on myself. Yeah, and and. And as the other person that, you know, got hurt, yeah, you're just like, well, how can I trust you? I'll let you back in to give you a benefit of the doubt, but I'm already expecting you to hurt me again or let me down. But I'm going to give you an opportunity, and I feel just like the way I am. I'm going to give you an opportunity to show me otherwise, but I already know you're going to disappoint me regardless. Yeah, of course. And I'm going to use that as a reason to leave your life. It wasn't on me. It was on you. Do you actually leave their life? Because I've known you for a couple of years. And I know you let people back in. Um, I think it's the how severe. Okay. They Like how close that person was to me. And if you were really, really close to me, there's no way you're coming back. You can call, text, see me, and nothing. And then there could be those people that, you know, just stop talking to you for a couple of years, a couple of months, and they come around, oh, what's up, bro? How are you? Of course. That was pretty much us. To a distance, you know? Yeah. I see you. You see me. We acknowledge each other. Boom, we keep it moving. You're not a part of my circle. My circle are the people that were there for me when nothing was around, when I was down bad. Because that's when you find out who he really is. When you have nothing else to offer because you're down bad, you're literally on the verge of giving up, and those people come and check in on you or are just there present with you throughout it. Instead of those people that, because you have nothing to offer, they're the ones that went away for that time you were down. And then once you're back up and winning, they all come right back. Oh, man, I see you doing good, man. I see you've been gone for a while. Yeah. Well, yeah, but you didn't check on you didn't check in on me. When I was bad. When I was bad. Yeah. Oh, you're, you're wondering why I didn't invite you to my celebration? Well, you weren't there when I wasn't being celebrated. So, it's, I don't know how you can allow someone back in after they hurt you. Would you allow someone back in? No. Uh, It depends on on the relationship that I had prior. Yeah. Right? Like you said, I may let them back in, but that's just because I really miss the relationship that we had. It's never going to be the same. Right? Like, it's just never going to be the same. You can't trust that person like you once did. Yeah. But uh, I'd give them a chance. Like you said, expect the worst. My expectations would be 
so low that it's more of a I'm gonna I'm gonna allow you back in because I miss the friendship yeah. or miss you as a person, but I know like you said you're gonna you're gonna let me down you're gonna disappoint me. Yeah, and then there was that. Uh, there's other quote where it's like, um, "Tell me how you feel about this," but sometimes it's our own fault for putting that false expectation on someone that we know is gonna hurt us and disappoint us. But yeah, we give them the responsibility to show and prove to us they can. Yeah. But deep down inside, we know they ain't going. They ain't gonna show Why up that way. Why do you think I always say it? Like it's it's like such a messed up mentality to yeah. to to live by, right? You can't be disappointed if you don't expect yeah. anything from them. Yeah. So when I do let people back in, that's the way that I let them back in. I'm gonna let you back in, but I don't expect shit from you. Yeah. Like I know I can't call you if I'm if I'm uh, yeah, down you're, bad. You're not on that list. You once were, now it it just it's not gonna work. Yeah. But I think it's and that that's the same thing with love. You you give a you give you have this illusion of oh it's gonna be perfect, this is a perfect person, this is the one for me, I'm oh, willing one, the one. I'm willing to change everything I got going on for this person and be able to make it work because I know this is a one a once in a lifetime type of opportunity to be with this person because how amazing they are. But then you realize over and over and over, and they're showing you all the time that. They're not that person for you, and they won't never be. So we have this illusion of, oh, it's going to, oh, man, it's going to work. It's going to work. And then when it doesn't, el único que queda, the only one that, that gets left hurt is yourself. And I don't know about you, but I can't take, I can't take heartbreaks. I was going to ask, how do you deal with heartbreak? <sighs> I can't take them. What do you mean you can't take it? Like, I mean, you've gone through it. Clearly, you're here. <laughs> what helps you? What helps you get through a heartbreak? Time. As it goes, learning how to deal with letting a person go. I don't want to let go of the idea, and that's where the time comes in. As I go, bettering myself, working on myself, I have to let go of the idea that, man, this isn't going to work. Because if it was, then we wouldn't be having these opportunities these discussions or these thoughts of what would have happened, you know? Um, so when I think in that, in that heartbreak is just, it ain't easy, man. For someone, when someone says, ah, oh, get over it. You're, nah, man, when you're emotionally, physically, mentally invested into somebody, yeah. a part of you dies when that shit dies. Like when you gave everything to a person, because if you, if you're going to give yourself, you give everything. Mentally, emotionally, physically. You're there. And when that part of you isn't there no more, yeah, there's a there's a part of you that dies and you have to mourn it too. So it's just like, damn, like my sunny days got into cloudy days. How the fuck do I get over this? And then realizing that life goes on and life needs to go on without that person. Don't put your happiness on other people is all I'm hearing from this. Because if when that person's not there, you're all triste and deprimido. And your happiness is gone. You go from happy sunny days to cloudy, to cloudy rainy days. Cloudy rainy days. That's insane. <laughs> My God, if you're watching this, I miss <laughs> My boy. <laughs> <laughs> if you know, I, if you know, you know. If you know, you know. If you know, you know. Oh man. Where are we at with this? Oh, we're at twenty four. We got like at least another question. Another question. Let's ask a good one. Yeah, yeah. How would you know if that person was the one? Mm. Obviously, they'd be here, but besides that, what qualities does that person need to possess for them to be your one? I think I want that. Do you think you're a handful? Oh, I, I, think I'm a, I'm, I, I think I'm a lot to deal with. How so? I'm not going to be at my best version 100% of the time. I'm going to have a lot of overthinking days and nights. I may be present. I may not be present. There's going to be times where I am physically there, but mentally I'm just checked out because of X, Y, and Z that's going on. Yeah. I'm a lot to deal with. But I don't blame them for not wanting to be there with me because 
it takes a certain person to put up with someone like me. Someone that's going through a struggle of trying to create a successful life and stay mentally intact. There's more bad days than good days, but I can't put that pressure on you. But if you decide to stay and you decide to be my rock and you decide to be my support system when I need you the most, then I know, you know, I'm like, I don't want it. I think this is the thing, right? As, us as men, we're not, we're very, very strong, emotional creatures. We deal with shit in silence day after day, week after week, month after month. We can be depressed for the next, the last six months and you will never know. Facts. Because I'm showing up every fucking day. But all I need is someone to tell me, yo, if you need me, I'm here. If you need to just sit down here in silence, I'm there with you. Because I'm already fighting against the world to try to prove myself. And now I got to fight against you, too? I can. I'm out. I, I am out of energy by the time I get home to try to fight. But again, I can't put that on you. But I promise you, if we get through this journey, it's going to be worth it. But there's some days where we show up for other people and be their rock. And when we need somebody to be our rock. There's no one there. There's no one there. We're over here crumbling and shit. And they judge us for being this type. And that's where, like, our society isn't meant for us to crack or to be vulnerable or to ask for help. Because we need to show up. And I, I agree. You need to show up as a man, as a person. You need to show up, and you need to get yourself out of this hole. But it would definitely be a little easier if we had that safe space to create it. So my person will allow me that space. You know, if I don't got it, you got it. But I know if you don't got it, I also got you. And if you don't got it and I don't got it, don't worry. I'll put that on me. I'll get us out of here. Because I know we can do it. I know we can. My, This is where, like, Relationship is just a little hard. Like, there's so much that needs to go into a relationship, but it's time. It's two people willing to fight the battle together in order to get to the sunny and beautiful days together. You may need to fight through the fucking storm first, but I promise you, as soon as we get through it, man, we're going we're gonna to have the glitz and glamour. We're going to have a great life. But it's us fighting it together, not us finding it individually. That's like the partnership, you know, part of like aspect, but it ain't easy. Not in this day and age. Oh, this it's difficult right now. This day and age is what can you give me? What can I give you? What could I take? What do you provide? You know, but you can't tell them about what the shit that you've been through. Cause they're like, why? I've been through a lot too. I've been through a lot. Oh you yeah. You don't know my story. Yeah. It's always that. It's always that. And it's just like, I want to understand your story because I want to know why you like this. And if we if we can help, if I can help you in some sort of way, let's do it. But I want to, I don't, I'm not asking you for your fucking life story because I'm going to use it against you. I want to hear your life story because I want to understand you. There was a, I think Teddy Swim said it. Now when I, when I see someone cause pain or be cruel to somebody, I don't look at it and be like, damn, that's a fucked up person. I look at them and be like, damn, I wonder what they went through. They're causing this. I wonder why they mad. I wonder what happened to them today or this week that got them this way. And, you know, when you're mad, sometimes you don't think about the collateral damage you take on. Agreed. And you cause pain into people that never that never even had the intention of causing you pain. So it's the, you know, be nice to people. Be nice to people. Yeah, be nice. You know, be understanding. Some people go through a lot of shit behind closed doors. And when you see them, it's the aftermath of them finding that war. So, a couple questions to ask, right? Oh my a goodness! Couple scenarios from t- a couple from scenarios TikTok? from TikTok, and you know, just life scenarios because we get a lot of conversations from everybody that sends us DMs through Instagram and even TikTok. I, trust me, I see them, and you, man, you guys go all through it. <laughs> no, trust me. I heard one the other day. Whoa. We were on live pretty much, what, yeah. three, four, ten, four days out of the week? Yeah, about three, four days out of the week. And one of them was, how do you cut the person 
that is supposed to be your person off? How do you cut that person off when they're the ones hurting you? Man, you have to realize when it is enough. If they're already showing you that they're not your person, they're already showing you that they're willing to hurt you, willing to jeopardize your sanity, your happiness, your well-being, how do you keep them there? I'm not going to tell me. I asked you the question. Oh, How do you keep them there? I think you can't. You, everybody has, like, their, what can I put up with? How far can I put up with it? You know, if they're already mistreating you, if they're already, they have time after time after time hurting you, and you're still there thinking, oh, yeah, I can change them. I'm sorry, you can't change them. You, you hurt them already. She hurt yeah. you, you hurt him. If he wanted to, he would definitely, definitely change for you. But someone that loves you isn't willing to hurt you. You know, maybe at one point they got lost and, you know, they messed up. But if they're doing it over and over and over again and you're still there, you're convenient. You become that person's, ah, that's just my punching bag. I can do X, Y, and Z and they're not leaving me. You know, I've seen girls do it all the time. And I've seen guys put up with scenarios with their women too. And I'm just like, I don't. I don't know what to tell you because I don't know what's enough for you. Exactly. Everyone's different. Every situation is different. Yeah. Like, how can I tell you what's your breaking point when my breaking point is different than yours? Of course. Some people's breaking point is emotional abuse. Yeah. Others, it may be physical. Yeah. Others is just. And others is, oh, well, we have f- seven years and kids together. I, how do I leave? Packing up your bags and going. But I think it's easier said than done, right? Oh, of course. Especially. Especially growing up, obviously, Latinos. A lot of our parents, a lot of our parents, I'm not going to, you know, say anything, but a lot of our parents just stuck around for the kids. For the kids. Right? That's all you know. Yeah. So how do you, I guess, decide, hey, you know what? This ain't working out. I think it's easier said than done. I think we live in a generation where our, it's a double-edged sword. We live in a generation where there's a lot of single parents yeah, and there's a lot of broken homes because one parent doesn't want to deal with the other person's abuse, disrespect. Of course. And sometimes it's, it's never to the extent like the way our parents went, but yet again, our parents stuck it out. They fought for the love. They fought for the home. Maybe it wasn't love anymore, but they fought for the home and for the kids. And on the other hand, our generation is, well... I'm leaving you, and we're going to have a separate home, and we're going to hate each other. And now your kids, that's all they know. Going to mom's house, going to dad's house. And it isn't the best thing in the world. Yeah. But I feel like our generation doesn't know how to fight for the relationship anymore because there's all these things on social media telling you what's right or what's wrong. Or you have those friends that are also single that are hyping you up on what you deserve and what you should have. That's right, queen. That's right, king. That's right. You do. You deserve this, this, this. You deserve this. the world. Why are you single? Why are you giving me single advice? It's always the single people. It's always. Like a, myself. It's always like, you know? <laughs> like myself. But it's just like, sometimes realize it. Sometimes your friends that are giving you that advice that may not be the best advice and you got to acknowledge it yourself. It's because they don't want to see you happy either, because there's a lot of snakes in the grass, and sometimes it's in your own it's it's in your own table. They don't want to see you happy, so girl, you better you better not let him. You better not do this. It's like, dude, you deserve more. You deserve more. But it's like, if only you understand the situation, te metes. But if you don't know the full story, no te metas. I think that applies a lot, right? Like Ooh. it's friends. Sometimes yep. it's family. Yep. Like, how do you deal with that? When you, it's family getting involved in your relationship. In my personal opinion, my personal opinion, if you don't know the full story, you can't get involved. There's always three sides to that story. Right. His, hers, and the truth. But you always have like you always have someone trying to butt into your home issues when they're not living at home. They don't know the situation. They don't know your relationship. They don't know what you both have to go through in order to even be present. So when people get involved, it's like, mejor no. Because once people get involved, ya valió verga. Everything gets fucked. 
Because now when family's involved, how do you go how do you show back up to the family knowing they know everything? Yeah. Now they're showing up and oh. And the thing is is you don't even know what they know. Yeah. Right? Because like you said, there's three truths. Yeah. You just Your know that hers and the actual truth. You just know you're the villain. It's always easier though. I think a lot of people don't like to own up to their screw ups, right? It's easier to pass on the the, like, the responsibility. It's like, I'm going to victimize myself, yeah. and I'm going to paint somebody else as a villain. And now you look like a bad person yeah. because I, didn't, I never said all the bad things I did to you. Yep. Right? You, you only told them your story. It's easier. Why would, I, why would I make myself look bad? Yeah. I mean, me personally, I don't care. I'll say exactly what I did. Yeah. But a lot of people, a lot of people aren't like that. Yeah, because if, if you tell someone, oh, well, we're not together no more, and Oh, well, what did they do? What did they do? It's always them, it's never you. It's always them, not you. And then again, with your friends that don't know anything, and you tell them whatever, like, oh, well, he should have never left you, even though you did. Like, he should understand. But it's like, nah, do you know what they did too? Do you understand what everything... Uh, everything has a cause and effect. Y la gente que... Just, you, have, you have to realize your friends. You have the people that are yes men to you, and that agree with you 100% of the time, even though you're wrong. And then you got the real motherfuckers, the real people that tell you, hey, you know what? You fucked up. Hey, you know what? You, you should have never done that. Or you know what? You shouldn't, you shouldn't do that. Even when you're out and about, say you go with your group of friends. If your person, if your people respect you and your relationship, they know what's right and wrong also. Yeah. And they won't allow you to fuck up. But then you have those other ones that you deserve better. Have your fun. Do your... It's like nah, man. Like you, you ready? You're for you want us to lose, but it's just like you can't be around yes people. You can't be around people that you know. Don't hold you accountable to your own screw ups and fuck ups. Truth is gonna hurt, and if they truly love you and care about you, the way you're moving, they're gonna they're gonna check you. They're gonna tell you the real deal. Pero los que no saben, que no se metan. Los que no saben, que no se metan. If you don't know the full story, don't get involved. Don't put. Don't give your your opinion. It's like I don't need your two cents. Keep them. Keep them. If I come to you for advice, then you can tell me. Yeah, of course. But if you if I don't, I don't need it. I don't want to hear it. So and it's a it's a tricky when you're in the relationship and you start telling people your business. Because now if you tell your friends what your partner did, now your friends have a certain perspective perspective of that person. Yeah. And when you bring them back in, oh, oh, mi amor, no sé qué vergas. Now, now you look like the fucking clown. The <laughs> circus is in town. Yeah, like boys and girls. And everybody, everybody knows that couple that has broken up ten times and are back together every single time. And oh, it's he's oh, again. He did that again. She it's did like you again? just see them walk in together, and I'm like, oh god. If <laughs> if you're that couple that walks into a place where say your friends are getting together and you walk in, everybody's like. Oh. You're that couple they don't want there because you guys always end up in a fight. Yeah. Right? Like <laughs> you got to you got to be like, "Damn, I can't believe he did that again." In oh like my, a couple weeks. Oh my god. He fucking did. Can you believe the way he talked to me? Hey, what are you doing? Oh, I'm right here with my mans. Which one? <laughs> <laughs> Which are you one? with one, two, or three? <laughs> you already know. No, it, it it's Maybe a daddy number one. You do, hey, you deserve the world, queen. You deserve the world. <laughs> She's over here like. All right, animals. so let me ask you something. Go for so, it. have you ever been in a relationship where the parents don't like you or heard of a story of someone where the parents didn't like them? I'll be honest. I'm super likable. <laughs> <laughs> People love me. No, I mean. Me personally, I haven't actually. Like, I I have never been in a relationship. But then that, that's also due to the fact that I've really only been in two actual relationships, right? Okay, so hypothetically, hypothetically say you're shoot. in a relationship with your part, you're with your uh -huh. partner. Say your parents don't like your partner, or your partner's parents don't like you. I would, me personally, I can tell my parents like, "Hey, you're gonna have to get with the program. This person makes me happy." Yeah. Yes, you've been in my life. My whole life. Yeah. You gave me life, right? Facts. But y'all chose to have me together. 
y'all didn't ask for no one's approval. I'm doing the same over here. So this person makes me happy. So know that I'm going to be with that person. But that's just me being honest, right? And a lot of people are going to say, oh, you're such, a, you're such an ass. Yeah. How can you talk to your parents that way? Yeah. But at the end of the day, it's like I'm choosing my person, right? Someone that, that makes me happy. Because a lot of the times it's like I think people, I guess, care about their parents' opinions way too much. Yeah. And the casi algos happen. And yep. it was almost something, and it could have been something, but because my mom, my dad, my sister didn't fucking approve, yeah. I gave up my happiness, yeah. right? My my parents have their own life. Like, my sister has her own life. Like, they're not there with me 24-7. They're not going to be there for me when I need a shoulder to cry on. Yeah. Just someone to uh, be that rock. So, I think if I pick somebody, I want that person to be to be the person that I choose and my parents' opinions, my family's opinions ain't going to matter. Yeah. What about you? Man, what about you? Let's go. Have you ever been in a relationship where the parents don't like you? I mean, I'm just like you. I'm pretty likable. I'm pretty well, likable. Well, well, but then again, yeah. it's one of those things where you hope, you know, you do everything out of respect and, you know, very understanding of everybody. But at the end of the day, your partner is your partner. Exactly. The home you're trying to build is only with that person. Everybody can have opinions. Everybody can have their perspectives, and everybody's entitled to it. Pero, si no me quieres, no me quieres. Like, I personally cannot be in a room full or even stuck with people that just don't like me. I, I don't know how to handle it. I can't handle it. I make it too obvious that I'm uncomfortable. Oh, same. And they're going to know it. But... For those people that are in a situation where the other parent doesn't doesn't like or, oh, my mom or dad doesn't approve of so-and-so, one, your parents are never wrong. You know, they may see something that you don't see. You know, you may be in, stuck in the clouds and you may be getting, you know, screwed over some way, shape, or form. Yeah. And, you know, if it's your parents, you listen, you know, somebody close. Yeah, you listen to an extent, right? To an extent. But at the end of the day, you make that personal choice if... If you want to be with that person, you go and you f work it and you fix it. And if your parents don't agree, well, how you said, mom and dad, I'm sorry, but I'm happy with this person. You know, and it, it, it takes two to tangle because your other person needs to be in line for that too. Like, am, am I willing to work this out together or are we just going to call it quits now? And... If you do it for other people's, to please other people, el que sale perdiendo eres tú. The one that says losing is you. That's true. I mean, sometimes you choose the partner that your parents, quote unquote, like. Yeah. But you end up being miserable. You end up getting a divorce, hypothetically. It just yeah. doesn't work. As yeah. opposed to, I mean, hey. Or they become the casi algo. It's like, damn, if I wouldn't have listened to my parents, would, would we have been together? What would have been? What we would have done, like, pero como dejamos a otra gente meterse en, en nuestra relación, we're here. That's why a lot of marriages and, like, relationships fail, though, right? Because yep. they take other people's opinions. Yeah, I can't be with account. you because so, in, look, I hope they like me. At the end of the day, if they don't, I don't know what I did to cause it. And whatever I did, I'm sorry. But I, I can't make everybody like me. Respect. I respect everybody. But if I don't get it back, I won't be disrespectful because you shouldn't. But, hey, just politely, I'm going to step away. I think it's easier. It's easier. I don't want to be there. Let's let's not cause this issue. Let's not be the clowns. Let's not be in that circus. I'll be over here. You decide if you want to be with me. If you don't, I'm good. But, again, you're learning who want, who's willing to go to battle with you in this thing called life. Not the easiest. Not the most prettiest all the time, but it's worth it. It's worth it. Yeah. Because we got places to be, people to see. You know, we're in San Diego. We're busy, busy. Shout out man. to my boy Topo, Mr. Chris. Mr. Chris. Getting us some tickets, or got us some tickets to the San Diego State game. Uh, Thank you. Versus Washington yes. State. 
So, ahorita lo tenemos que preparar. Tenemos que poner bien papis, papisitos. <risa> no I, tengo can't que... I can't say what I want to say, but you know what I want Mira, to... lo tenemos que bañar y te, nos tenemos que llegar presentables. So, you guys know, you, know, you guys been saying, oh, no 30-minute podcast. We got you. It's not a 30-minute podcast. It's, it's, not, it's about a 45. It's about a 45, but you know what? Before, before we leave. Before we leave. Last question I got. Bam, run them. Damn, you know what? I think I already asked you that question. Never mind. Never mind. Did Pepe, do you have, do you have a quote for us today? I'm gonna, I'm gonna be honest. I do not have a quote today. <laughs> do you have a quote today? Let me tell everybody. When you guys on TikTok Live say, "What's the quote of the day?" I'm sometimes going through we, it. I'm just, just, I'm just, I'm just going through it, man. I'm trying to, I'm trying to survive my days just the same way you guys are. But it's one of those things on the. I actually heard one. It's one of those things where you kind of just take pe bits and pieces of things you hear throughout throughout the throughout the week. And um, there's two. One of them it was from the Mike Tyson uh, podcast where one of the guys was, "You will never know the amount of violence I had to go through in order to be this gentle. You never know the battle someone had gone through in order to be who they are. You know." There's a reason why I'm like this, and it's because everything I've already been through and I'm going through. So please don't judge a book by its cover. The next one was, everything changed when I realized we're not meant to feel excited and perfect at, at all, all the time. It's insane. It's insane. Everything changed when I realized we're not meant to feel excited and perfect all the time. Some days are good. Some days are bad. You just got to be able to take All the punches. The days, I have a little reminder. I posted it in my, oh, my Instagram a week ago. Perfect. Actually. Perfect. This one's short and sweet. Super, super short. I hope you fall in love with being alive again. Let that sink in. A lot of people are going through it. Yeah. So to everyone going through it, I hope you fall in love with being alive again. Have you fallen in love with that yet? Again? No. Yeah. And I think that's where I'm at. And we've talked about it prior. Yeah. It's one of those where just trying to get by another day. Because these past couple of months, the these past couple of, like this year, yeah. you asked the question on the, pre on the last uh, episode of when was the last time I felt joy? Yeah. And it stuck to me that I hadn't felt it in such a long time. Like, yes, there's, like, joyous moments, right? Like, being with family, being with friends, like, little bits of pieces of happiness that I feel. Yeah. But am I happy with life and myself right now? No. Yeah. So I hope I fall in love with life again. Hopefully sooner rather than later. Just because, again, just trying to make it another day. I want to make it a 35, so. One day at a time. Don't rush it. Don't. Take it slow. It's going to be all right, but, you know, take your time. Hopefully we can all fall in love with life once again. Pero. Appreciate every single one of you guys. Every single one of you guys that listens to us, follows us, shares our videos. We love you to death. We appreciate all the support, the endless love you guys give us when we see you guys in person, meet you guys wherever we are. We are a fan of you guys just, a ma just as much as you guys of us. And you guys always say, oh, I don't want to bother you. You never bother. Never bother. Never. I, I want to have that interaction. We want to have those interactions because... You. Without you guys, we wouldn't be here. So it makes it worth it. It makes you feel like what we're doing is yeah. worth it. So just because this was a day after my birthday, I want to appreciate you guys for making my 28 years of life amazing and for letting me enter my 29th uh, year with such a blessed and big opportunities. And who would have thought? Who would have thought? Who would have thought that? A Tulsa life would be where it's at right now and where it's going to be in the next year. So, 
Can't wait to see what. Can't wait to see it, man. The most organic, most authentic, most organic podcast. According to? <laughs> According to us, mother. Us, not Google. Us, but not Google. Google, if you want to make it a, a thing, hey, go for it. Let's make nosotros, it a question. Nosotros andamos aquí porque sabemos. That's right. Sangre Michoacana. Ahorita porque estamos los dos. Y no está la de, la de Zacatecas. La de, Jerez. la de Jerez. La de Jerez. La de Jerez y nuestro salvadoreño. That's right. Pero, guys, make sure you guys like, share, subscribe. Stay tuned for the next one because it's going to be in Atlanta. Atlanta. Stay tuned. Do, 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 do. Uh, <laughs> Let's go.